Yeah. Wait, I can't hear you. You're breaking up. No, seriously, I'm out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, I know that not every incident is breached. No, I know it's good. When in doubt, report to either the ISO or to the privacy officer. But you still there? Brett. Hello? Where in the world am I? Free tow service. Just call. <laughs> Do a horse throw a shoe? Or is he just plumb dry? Jug right there, you get yourself taste. Little sips now, you don't gulp it. What? I found you about 60 yards that away in that broke down jalopy. It's gonna leave you for the buzzards, but Johnny Red, he hates buzzards. I figured they could skip supper for one night. I see. What in blazes are you doing out here? Is there some kind of insurance selling convention nobody told me about? What do you mean? Look at you. Them shoes. Shirt and tie, no hat. What are you doing out here in this country in that get up? I, uh, I, I work for the VA. The Department of Veterans Affairs. Huh. I'm on my way to the field office just over that ridge. My GPS said this was the shortest route. GPS. Typical greenhorn mistake. What all you do over there at that VA? I'm a deputy administrator and in charge of... Look, it's kind of technical. I don't want to bore you. Oh, you think I wouldn't understand? No, I just... You think I'm smart enough to save your tender behind, but I ain't smart enough to understand how you earn your keep. I get it. That's all right. No, I... I work as a liaison between information services, privacy offices, and the procedural development team. That sounds interesting. Yeah. Listen, uh, Mr. What'd you say your name was? I didn't. Oh. Uh, nothing personal. Oh, I didn't take it personal. I can't go handing your name just out to anybody. No offense, but uh, I don't know you. I don't know as you need to know my name. You take my point? I take your point better than you might imagine. Oh, is that right? Yes, sir. You see, in, in my business, the meeting I guess I'm now officially very, very late to, a name is something we call personally identifiable information, or PII. Anything that's particular to one person, name, date of birth, social security number, address, phone number, it's our job to protect it. So, um, what I mean is, I understand about privacy. Sir? A lot of folks call me Sundown. Sundown? That's what you can call me. And that there is Johnny Red. But, uh, he ain't much of a talker, though. Okay. Um, and my name Greenhorn. is... Greenhorn. You're Greenhorn. Greenhorn? He's almost buzzard chow. Uh, yeah. 
about that. Uh, thank you don't for mention looking it. after me. No, seriously, I, I don't know what I would have no, done. No, I ain't kidding. You don't mention that to anybody. Sorry. This here's my spread, Greenhorn. And I got a reputation for being ornery. And I like that reputation. I got enough to do around here without saving folks bacon every 20 minutes. Okay. Good. Now that PII business. Yeah? What about all that information you folks gen up about him? You know, about his care and uh, what medications he's taken, his benefits and whatnot? Is that the same? Absolutely. All right, now what if that feller wants it for himself? You know, veterans have the right to their own information. That's part of the health insurance. Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. Yeah. That spread's mighty big, Greenhorn. You'd be surprised what all a cowboy has to know these days. Hey, that privacy stuff. Does that always work? Sorry? Well, I've had a couple of head of stock go wandering off where they oughtn't to every now and again. Ain't never been any operation run dead solid perfect, you know. Well, sometimes people make mistakes. Yeah. Sometimes they don't know what they ought to know or there's some sort of accident. When that happens, they need to report it. Uh, our IT department needs to fix it, and there may or may not be some sort of discipline. Now, if somebody does something meaning to cause harm, then they're in a lot of trouble. They're severely disciplined or fired, and they might face criminal charges and stiff fines, too. Some ponies are just green. Some are just lazy, and some are just bad ponies. I guess so. But, you know, if you're new or you don't know the procedure, you can always ask for help. Information security officers, privacy officers, that's part of their job. Yeah, of course. It's poor cowboy. That's a green pony. Just stay green. For us, we require all of our people to have annual training in privacy awareness and uh, information security. And I don't just mean employees. I mean everyone who has access to computers and information. That's employees and contractors and interns and volunteers, everyone. Everyone has to work according to the same rules. Yeah, but uh, no training in prairie survival. No, we don't usually plan on needing that one. Yeah, you might want to rethink that one, Greenhorn. Listen, you get all these rules and whatnot, and what is it you're worried about? It ain't like you fellers got all kinds of sensitive documents just sitting all over the place like haystacks now, do you? Well, no. We do have to be careful with paper documents, files, folders, but a big part of this work has to do with electronic security. Computers. That's right. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what, Green. Some people got it easy. They just have to lock their doors and windows and everything's safe. You and me, we gonna ride every inch of our spread. Checking that fence for holes all the darn time. I guess that's so. <laughs> you know, one of my best buddies, Big Hat Broward, he's got about 10,000 head of cattle. He got a spread as big as a whole county. Ooh, 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 you know, ooh, folks, they hear you got that many cattle, that much land, they think, well, he must be on easy street. But it's just that much more to keep up with, you know? Anyway, one day Big Hat, he, he goes riding way, way out there. And on one little corner of his spread, he finds this one hole in his fence. It's no bigger than two feet. Dead gummit. Half his herd got out through that one little hole. That ain't no good. Ouch. You think rounding up 5,000 head of cattle is easy? No, no. Worst part of it, Green, even if you do get them back, then you gotta start to worry. How'd that hole get there? Was that accident, a storm, or did somebody make it? You mean rustlers? I mean rustlers, yes sir, I do. A couple of brothers by the name of Julius and Ebenezer Hackworst. 
Uh, these Hackworth brothers been a thorn in the side of honest ranchers around here for, dang, nigh on 20 years. Ebby, Ebby, over her. Yeah. All right. This here's a spot. Uh, say, uh, Julius. Yeah. Uh, you bring them cutters? What? Are you kidding? I gotta think of everything. I, I was hungry when we left this morning. I, I didn't get enough breakfast, I guess. I must have forgot. When ain't you hungry? Well, I guess you better get over there, start gnawing on the wire. Rustlers like these two, Debbie. they're always stirring right. things up. You ready? Trying to mess up the system any way they can. Finley and now. I could have done better, but Julius. Can we get lunch already? Yes, it will do. But I suppose ranchers ain't the only ones with enemies. I reckon you got folks you worry about too. Well, the first thing we have to do at our place is to make sure everyone using our system is doing it for the right reasons. Everything inside our fence is supposed to be for our business, which is taking care of veterans. Hmm. We do allow limited use of our equipment if it's not on the VA's time and it doesn't violate any of the basic rules for privacy, safety, and legality. You can check your email, but you can't start a second business or visit, say, a poker site, you know? Hmm. Yeah, I hear that. I had to have me a word with uh, young Pete Perkins the other day. Now, Pete's my nephew, and bless his heart, he ain't got a lot of grain in his silo, you know what I mean? Anyway, he was meant to be helping feeding the horses, but every single time I looked his way, he had his cell phone out, and he was uh, text messaging some girl or another. Exactly. We need to keep strict rules about what's okay and what's not, and when it's okay and when it's not. Now, that's exactly what I told young Pete. This here's my spread, it's my time, my rules. And of course, these days, people have computer lives away from work beyond email. There's all this social media, you know, Twitter and Facebook and so on. The VA is exploring ways of uh, using this as an outreach tool, so there's actually some official use going on. So again, it's a question of, are you doing VA business or personal business? And of course, remembering that using these media as a VA employee means that you're representing the VA, so you need to behave accordingly. So you can't go on there and post comments about how uh, old Senator Watts' bucket is the biggest moron this side of the moon. <laughs> right. Yeah, and ugly in the bargain. Right. Uh, it maybe ought to lay off the booze. <laughs> right. And all of that's off limits. Still, all boils down to my spread, my time, my rules. That's true. And still, other rules are about the actual equipment, the hardware. For instance, we don't let anyone use non-VA equipment on our network. You can't just bring in a laptop and plug it in. Well, then I reckon you can't let folks bring in their own little, uh, what do you call them? Uh, little key drives then, neither. Right. Key drives, thumb drives, external hard drives, nothing like that. It's all VA hardware only, used according to VA procedure. All of our drives are encrypted, all of our software is kept up to date. And if you have a VA laptop away from the office, you can't leave it anywhere without securing it with a locking cable. <laughs> you gotta rope your laptop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of people don't understand this thing that's not much bigger than a clipboard. It can hold huge amounts of information. Oh, they don't understand. Look here, Greenhorn. You see this little gizmo? Yeah. Every head of stock I own is logged right into this. And they're tagged, too, so that I can track them. This here is satellite fed, it's GPS synchronized. Now I lose this, and I'm halfway to losing the herd. Somebody comes in here, monkeys with this, all of a sudden, I don't know how many head I got. Wow. Oh, look at you. You thought the information age only came to the big city, didn't you? <laughs> right. Sorry, I didn't mean to sound Like that. a school marm talking to the class dunce? <laughs> right. Yeah, well, no offense taken, Greenhorn. So, anyway, once everyone is clear on the rules for the use of our equipment and our network, we give them access to it. You learn the house rules, you get yourself a key. Yeah, kinda. And uh, our key is a password that gives a user access to our networks and our services. Even when we're on the road, the only way we can access the VA is through the virtual private network, and that needs a password too. So you get yourself a password, 
get yourself a computer. Presto, you got a gate. Right. So we have some pretty strict rules about passwords. It can't be something that just anybody could guess. Like, uh, say, the word password? <laughs> right, exactly. I had an uncle, Four Thumbs Cletus. He had that for his uh, email and whatnot. Sip, he couldn't spell. So he had it as P-A-S-S-W-E-R-D. So he was a teeny bit safer, I reckon. Well, we try for more than one hard to guess letter. We want our passwords to be at least eight characters long. The longer, the better. We also require a mix of uppercase and lowercase with numbers and special characters thrown in. Those little differences to mix things up. It may not seem like it makes that much of a difference, but apparently every, every extra possible character makes the bad guy's job that much harder. It has to do with something called entropy value. Well, it, it's kind of technical, but uh, I follow your thinking. Like I said, Green, it's a mighty big spread. Yeah. So, we tell our people not to use their birthdays or their names or social security numbers or any obvious stuff. And obviously, if it's complicated enough that you need to write it down, don't leave it anywhere where people could find it. <laughs> write it down. Yeah, you were making me remember about two years back, we had a break in over to my barn. Seems that was probably the hack worst brothers too, up to no good. Anyway, we was putting on one of them new locks, you know, the kind that you, you can set yourself. My wife's cousin, Sideways Bailey. He ain't got all the dots on his dice, you know? Anyway, he's setting it up, and he calls me over and he announces all proud, I done it, and I wrote it down too, so as we never gonna forget, that barn is locked up safer than Fort Knox. And I says to him, did you put that piece of paper somewhere safe? And he says, all proud like, well, sure, it's in the barn. I swear to you, I had to stare at that boy for a full minute before he got to thinking that maybe he done something wrong. How did you get it? Well, as my wife pointed out, she's the brains in the family, lucky for us. We hadn't put a lock on the side door yet. Okay, geniuses, after you fix up the rest of the barn, why don't you add another lock to the back? Thank you, honey. Promise me you won't breed. I have to say, it's kind of surprising to me how similar our work is. Right down to worrying about locking every door. Shh, what is it? You hear something? Good. Neither do I. Don't hurt to listen out every now and again, does it? I guess not. Gotta be alert. Anytime you're working with something valuable, you gotta protect it. Now, you got your data, but I got my stock. I reckon you got more gates to watch than I do. Like we were saying before, every computer in your operation is a gate. That's true. But on the other hand, every employee is a gatekeeper. That's a fair point. But they have to know what they're guarding against, you know? There are so many different ways people try to slip through that gate. Peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, we call it P2P, is such a huge risk, we don't even allow it on our system. Yeah, just a bunch of crooks. Just people trying to get away without paying for stuff. Swapping music and movies and whatnot. I tell you, worse even than them hack worse brothers, as far as I'm concerned. That's pretty much true, but we can't outlaw email. Malware and phishing are constant threats that email makes possible. You know, I'm just thinking now, Green, that it's not just that a computer is a gate to your ranch, it's a gate to all your ranches, and all the businesses connected to those ranches. Right on the nose, Sundown. Yeah. And everyone who comes through that door has to be stared at pretty hard. We have to treat everyone like they had the flu, you know? If we don't already know them and trust them, we have to send them away. We tell our people never to open any emails or attachments they don't trust. Because it might contain viruses. That's why you said that about the flu. Oh, viruses, sure. But that's not even a specific enough word anymore. There are so many different kinds of harmful little programs nowadays. We call them malware. You're talking terms like um, worms and uh, Trojan horses and whatnot, right? 
Well, sure, and uh, phishing scams. You get an email that looks official and it asks you to click on this link to verify something. It looks legit, but it's actually harvesting your name or your password or logging keystrokes. Dang. I reckon you folks must have some mighty powerful antivirus software. Sure. And that protects us against most of the electronic threats. But then we have to stay clear of the human threats too. If someone can't break into our network electronically, then they might try just old-fashioned social engineering. Social engineering? Oh, you mean like uh, building dams and highways and whatnot? Oh, no, that's, uh, that's civil engineering. That's... <laughs> oh, you're just messing with me? Okay. Social engineering is just conning people. Using your social skills to get people to give you things that they shouldn't access or information. Social engineers know exactly how to take advantage of people who just want to help. Way heady on that one, Greenhorn. A couple years back, I was uh, fixing to shift about half my herd to some land I keep about 80 miles north of here. Now, that's not the kind of move you go blabbing to the whole world, especially in the world's got the hack worst brothers in it. Operation's gonna be vulnerable, you know what I mean? Anyway, my second cousin, Herman, he's with the herd and we's all back making sure we got supplies and whatnot. And, well, I guess I shouldn't left such a big job on Herman. He's got a good heart, but he ain't got all his cornflakes in one box, you know what I'm saying? You see what I see, Abby? Uh, lunch? Oh, is that all you think about? Pretty much, yeah. No, not food, not yet anyway. This here's Herman, ain't that right, Herman? Well, yes, sir. Herman P. Moonbranch, what uh, can I do you for? Well, my brother and I was wondering. We've been out of work for a long time, and we met a man by the name of Sundown day before yesterday. Well, my Uncle Sundown. Uncle Sundown. Uncle Sundown. <laughs> yeah. Well, he just told us to come down here. We could get some work. He did? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he did. He, he did. Well, I'm much obliged, because I sure do need the help. Anyway, there sits old Herman just telling those Hackworth brothers all kinds of information. Where we was headed, when we was going to get there, how much herd we're moving. Doggone it, if Big Mouth Herman didn't give them every single little detail. Did anything ever come of it? No. But that's because I come running up, and I shot Julius Hackworth dead. Nah, I'm just kidding you. <laughs> no, nah, nothing ever come of it. But, uh, you know, that might be because that afternoon, Herman told me I met the new hands. Well, I got the story out of them. And then I went out and hired four more hands to make sure nothing could come of it. Oh, that cost me some pesos, though. It's a hard lesson. Any kind of breach can have a lot of unexpected costs. Yeah, well, I took some of it out of Herman's backside, so. <laughs> I guess it wasn't all bad. Well, listen, I've been Herman. Is that right? I'd only been with the VA for about three months, and I was covering somebody else's desk. The phone rang, and it was this really gruff-sounding guy wanting to know why he was logged out of his network. And, you know, I didn't know why, so I suggested he call IT. But he was really upset, and he said he was already late for a meeting with the regional chief, and. He needed some data and he couldn't get in and he needed a password. Didn't I have a generic password I could give him? And I told him I didn't and he just got madder and madder and... I ended up giving him my password. Which is, you know, 58 kinds of stupid. What is your password anyway? What? What's your password? I'm just curious. I don't think so. You don't think so what? It's a new password since that one. I can promise you that. We have to change our password every 90 days even when we haven't been idiots and given it away. You think I'm gonna make the same mistake twice? Oh, come on now. That first time was just a mistake. You said so yourself. Look, we're out here in the middle of nowhere. What am I gonna do with it even if I do know it? What do you care what it is? Do I really look that dumb? 
Son, truth is, you look about as dumb as every other white collar, oats for brain, city slicker I've ever seen in my life. Especially if you think my knowing your password could even matter. Haven't you been listening? We don't tell anyone, no matter what. Boy, I don't think you could pour water from your boot if you had the instructions written on the heel. I had the instructions written on Yeah, you take your time with that one, professor. <sighs> Listen, pal, I will not give you my password. First of all, sundown. I don't know who you think you are. And second, Sit I'm not just... down. Look at you. I guess you ain't Herman anymore. <laughs> you. <laughs> you were just. Okay. <laughs> Test. Okay. Pretty good. Let me ask you something. You was talking back there about uh, discipline and uh, termination, heavy fines and whatnot. So, uh, they throw you in the Huskow for this social engineering thing? No. We're all trained that whenever anything goes wrong, or even if we just think it might have, that's called an incident. And we have to report the incident to either our information security officer or our privacy officer right away. Incident? I don't know. That sounds kind of officey. Why don't you just call it what it really is? Big old screw up. <laughs> well. Mine was that, but we have to report things that might not even be problems. That happen a lot? Incidents that ain't no big deal? We have more than zero, and as far as we're concerned, that's too many. And yeah, there are lots of kinds of incidents. A lot have to do with PII. Maybe you fax something to the wrong number or mail something to the wrong address. Probably nothing bad happens, but the PII has now gone where it shouldn't. That's mm -hmm. an incident. Maybe you come back from lunch and you see you left some files out on your desk that should have been locked up. Losing equipment or sharing a password, those are both big deals, obviously. Improper disposal can be one too. Disposal? Well, you know, information gets either archived or destroyed. Same with equipment. We need to maintain the integrity, the privacy of the network and the PII, even though sometimes we need to dispose of data and hardware. What's wrong? It's nothing. It's just uh, reminding me of a time a while back. I had some cattle get sick. Sick enough that we had to put them down. Then, uh, you know, we had to do the same thing to all the other cattle that might have been in contact with them. It's one of the hardest things I ever had to do. Of course, a situation like that, you can't do it halfway. You end up worse off than you was before. Luckily for us, our disposals don't usually hurt that much. At least, not like that. We're only getting rid of things that we don't need or putting them out of the way. But if you're right about having to do it correctly, about how doing it wrong can be a problem. <sighs> Sorry. Had yourself a big day. Maybe you ought to turn in. Aren't you gonna go to sleep? No. There's a reason I go by sundown. This here's my time. You think in the morning we can get back to my car? I think you'll get back without any trouble. You're all right, Greenhorn. It's been nice kind of chewing the fat with you. Likewise, Sundown. Hey, Sundown. Yeah. Whatever happened to the Hackworth brothers? I think they went into politics. <sighs> Good night, Leonard.
Hey, buddy. Rise and shine, friend. Uh -huh. You need a tow, right? Uh, yeah, but... Slept oh. out here all night? How did you get here? Uh, drove. No, I mean... Who called you? Don't know. Got a call from dispatch. Soon there's a car out here that need a tow from Sundown Ranch. Sundown? That's right. Not many people break down out here. No, you mean Sundown. The guy who must have called you. He, he's a cowboy. He spent most of the night talking. Not far from here. At his camp. Don't know anyone named Sundown. Must hit your head pretty good. Hardly anyone even knows that this road exists anymore. Surprised you found it. The Shande. That's what this land is. Private. Thousands of acres of nothing but beauty. You're miles from anywhere, Mr. You can call me Green. Okay, Mr. Green. Let's get you on your way. 